Hi there, and welcome to Dumpster PC's trip down memory lane look at the socket A. So in front of me here, we've got an A-bit NF7-M socket A motherboard. And we'll look at it more closely towards the end of the video, but first, let's have a look at the actual socket A. So here it is. The socket A was also known as the socket 462 because it had, you guessed it, 462 contacts or pins on the CPU. So socket A is what AMD used after they went to a slot A format for their first generation Athlon CPU, or the K7. Now the socket A used the same bus as the slot A, which was an EV6 bus which was licensed from digital and it was used in the Alpha 21264 CPU. The first AMD cord socket A CPU came out that came out was a Thunderbird core and it came out in June 2000. The Thunderbird was manufactured on a 180 nanometer process and it featured 37 million transistors in a die size of 120 millimeters squared. It started with a 100 MHz frontside bus, but because the EV6 was double pumped, it was a DDR bus, it had an effective speed of 200 MHz. Now the Thunderbird, it brought the level 2 cache on die, because the Athlon Classic, or the original K7 Athlon, that was used in slot A systems, had an off die level 2 cache, communicated with the core over a backside bus. So Thunderbird brought this level 2 cache on die but at half the size of what was used on the Athlon Classic. It brought it on die but it brought it as an exclusive cache, so a victim cache. This meant that the contents of the level 1 cache weren't replicated in the level 2 cache. So items were prefetched into the level 1 cache and then if they were used and then there was some point in time in the future where they were no longer needed governed by the cache's replacement algorithm so least recently used perhaps it would get evicted to the level 2 cache and this effectively meant that the cache hierarchy acted as a very large level 1 cache with a slow portion that was this victim cache, the level 2 cache and a fast portion that was the actual level 1 cache. So the effective cache size of these CPUs could be found by adding the level 1 plus the level 2 size. And this was unlike Intel's CPU designs where they used an inclusive design. And this meant that the contents of the level 1 cache were also found in the level 2 cache. So the Thunderbird, it brought on half the amount of cache as the classic but it ran it at the full core speed, unlike the slot A Athlons, which ran at either a half, two fifths, or one third of the core speed, depending on how fast the CPU core was. So the slower versions ran their SRAM level 2 cache at, at half the speed, then there was an intermediate step of two fifths, and the final one gigahertz slot A Athlon ran its cache at a third. So the cache speeds topped out at 350 or 333 megahertz. Now in October 2000, AMD released the Athlon C, which was a Thunderbird as well, but it had a 133 megahertz frontside bus, or effectively 266 megahertz. Now the Thunderbird was AMD's high-end Athlon CPU. In order to address the low end, or the lower end of the market, AMD released a Duron CPU. And this first Duron CPU used a core called Spitfire, which was based on Thunderbird. And the difference between Thunderbirds and the Spitfires were that the Spitfire had only 64 cache of 64K of level 2 cache, and they all ran using a 100 MHz frontside bus and the later model Thunderbirds ran with 133 MHz frontside bus. So, Thunderbird extended all the way from 600 MHz 
to 1.4 GHz in the Athlon line and 600 to 950 MHz in the Duron line. And the C version of the Athlon started at 1 GHz and that version was the one that had 133 MHz frontside bus. Now following the Thunderbird there was the Palomino core which AMD marketed as the Athlon XP. It shared the same 180 nanometer manufacturing process as the Thunderbird and it was released in October 2001. It however had slightly more transistors. It had 37.5 million in a die area 128 millimeters squared. And the Athlon XP saw AMD move to a PR system for their model numbers where a model was given a PR rating that was supposed to be the equivalent Thunderbird speed that would have the same performance as this Palomino CPU. So an Athlon XP 1600, so that's a um, PR rating of 1600, ran at 1.4 gigahertz. And this was AMD saying, this Palomino core, even though it runs at 1.4 gigahertz, gives the same performance as Thunderbird would at 1.6 GHz. Now, the Palomino was AMD's first CPU that implemented the full SSE instruction set. So they got extra performance from that. It was also the first core to officially support dual processing. So as well as an Athlon XP, there was an Athlon MP for multiprocessing. And this allowed users, or OEMs, to build a two-socket server using Athlon MPs. All Palominos ran with 133 MHz frontside bus. And they ranged from 1.33 GHz, which had a model rating of 1500, to 1.73 GHz, which had a model rating of 2100. And similarly to the Thunderbird, there was also a Duron that was derived from the Palomino core. And this was called the Morgan core, and it ran from 900 megahertz to 1.3 gigahertz. It also ran on 100 megahertz frontside bus, so it never got that slightly faster bus speed. There were even mobile versions of the Palomino core, called the Mobile Athlon 64, and these ranged from 850 to 1.4 gigahertz. Now Palomino also saw AMD make one more change. And this was to move from a ceramic substrate to an organic substrate. So they moved to an OPGA, an organic pin grid array package. And they kept this organic package all the way to the final socket A CPUs. So that was Palomino. Palomino was followed by a core called Thoroughbred which was AMD's first 130 nanometer core. The first revision of Thoroughbred was released in 2002 and it had 37.2 million transistors so a slightly smaller transistor number than Palomino but it had a die size of 80 millimeter squared compared to 128 millimeter squared and this was thanks to the 130 nanometer process rather than 180. Now the first Thoroughbred was essentially a direct die shrink of Palomino. And because of this, it took no characteristics of the process into account, and it saw no large increase in clock speed or a large reduction in heat that you would expect from a die shrink. The thoroughbred ran from 1.4 GHz to 1.8 GHz, and these were given a model rating of 1600 to 2200. AMD soon followed with a second revision of the Thoroughbred though, which they termed Thoroughbred B. And this saw the market in August 2002. And the main difference from Thoroughbred A, which it retrospectively became known as, to Thoroughbred B, was AMD added another metal layer in the process, for 9 in total. And this extra metal layer allowed them to do more routing, or more sophisticated routing. And with this, they could optimize the electrical paths so that the physical distances between the functional blocks of a CPU 
or of their CPU could be reduced. And the reducing of these distances meant that they could increase the clock speed. And this increase in clock speed can be seen because the thoroughbred B cores, they topped out at 2.25 gigahertz. And this got given a model rating of 2800 plus. So thoroughbred B also introduced the 166 megahertz front side bus, so effectively 333 megahertz. Now if you're seeing some funny reflection here next to the socket A, that's two little plastic pads that were there underneath the lugs of the socket to prevent users from scraping the PCB. My battery may die shortly, and if that does, we'll get back to the Barton core after this. But just like the other two cores, there were also a Duron core that was based on the Thoroughbred core, and this was known as Applebred. So, that's our first look at the first three cores that AMD produced on the Socket A.